Welcome to Pikmin Explained, the new series where we talk through the flora and fauna, friends and foes of the Pikmin universe, bringing you direct information from the wonderfully written in-game logs and the Piklopedia. This series is designed for new and veteran Pikmin fans alike, so feel free to share it around to somebody you know that loves or is interested in getting into Pikmin. My name is Vantage Emblem, and today we're going to be chatting about one of my favorite creatures in the planet of the Pikmin, PNF 404, Bulborbs. But before we get started, remember to like if you enjoy, and if you feel so inclined, subscribe too. Only a handful of you are subscribed, so every subscriber counts. The support is appreciated. That being said, let's get into it. Pikmin Explained Bulborbs Being the most recognizable enemy in the Pikmin series, our friend the Bulborb is nearly as iconic as the Pikmin themselves. A classic foe of Olimar in the Pikmin, the basic Bulborb is featured in all main series Pikmin games, though their name varies across entries. Basic Bulborbs are sleepy little guys that are lazy during the day but active during the night. These nocturnal fellas are passive until woken up, in which case they become a dangerous threat to the unsuspecting leader and their Pikmin. Characterized by their massive jaws, which are used to eat up Pikmin, and by the peering of its distinctive twin eye stalks, these creatures are quite iconic sporting two small legs and large spotted bodies that are frankly massive in comparison, it's a wonder how these bipedal creatures can even support their weight, let alone be effective hunters. Bulborbs are about 9 centimeters in length, making them roughly the size of a large mouse. This means they tower over Pikmin, who are only 2.9 centimeters tall. If Pikmin were human size with an average height of 162 centimeters, Bulborbs would be 502 centimeters. For those who prefer the Imperial system, that would be about 16.5 feet. That would make them longer than the average car if they were in our scale. Fortunately, they are only small little dudes, but they do have a big appetite. Bulborbs in the original Pikmin Spotty Bulborb. This nocturnal hunter feeds mostly on small animals returning to their nest at night. In the first Pikmin title, this beastie is referred to as the Spotty Bulborb. Here, it can often be found surrounded by what were assumed at the time to be its young, the dwarf bulborb, though they are not the same species. It's the singular subspecies of bulborb found in the game, though not the only grub dog. The best strategy to fight bulborbs in this title is to always attack them from behind, swarming and throwing many Pikmin directly onto the back. Bulborbs and Pikmin 2 Here, we learn that bulborbs have been reclassified as red bulborbs rather than spotty bulborbs given that there are now other Bulborbs in the game that also have spots. Olimar gives the following overly intellectual notes on the subject in the Piklopedia, characteristic of the superb and surprisingly complex writing of Pikmin 2. Let's take a listen. This large organism has the familiar mandibles and cranial morphology of the grub dog family, as well as the characteristic bulging eyes. As with most grub dogs, the creature's cranium comprises half of its total length and girth. Showing a scarlet abdomen with white spots, this creature is primarily nocturnal, choosing to prey upon smaller creatures returning to their nests. Originally classified as the spotty bulborb, further research has reclassified this species as the red bulborb. Subspecies of varied colors have been recently discovered, but academics are divided into two rival camps over how to handle their classification. As you can see, Olimar's notes are a scientific description of the beast's form and classification, alongside its hunting traits. Louis, on the other hand, simply provides instructions for how to cook a fallen bulborb. This is consistent with his notes throughout the series, where he chooses to create a cookbook out of the game's bestiary. Dare I say it, let's listen in. Plump specimens are best spit-roasted whole, stuffed with the lime and the slab of bacon. Based frequently to ensure a magnificently moist haunch. So, on that flavorful note, let's again transition to how red bulborbs fare in combat. In Pikmin 2, it's best to use purple Pikmin to stun these beasts. That being said, flanking the creature and unloading Pikmin on the exposed back is the best strategy for battle, regardless of Pikmin type used. Swarming is far less effective here than in Pikmin 1, and a direct toss is usually the better option. Bulborbs in Pikmin 3. Bulborbs return in the third entry in the original Pikmin trilogy, and they appear here in glorious HD. Their eyes, in particular, are absolutely stunning, which is good, because in this game, they're a weak spot. They're now simply referred to as Bulborb, or Basic Bulborb. 
Though flanking and throwing Pikmin onto the exposed back will always be an effective strategy, charging Pikmin instead is perhaps the most effective strategy to combat these creatures. In a pinch, throwing Pikmin at their exposed eyes will now stun these foes, giving you valuable time to readjust during a battle. In Pikmin 3 Deluxe's Piklopedia, content added new with the Switch port of the game, we get returning entries from Olimar and Louis. Olimar's entry is altered slightly to use the Bulborb's new name, but nothing else changes. That being said, we have three entirely new entries from Alf, Brittany, and Charlie each. The sections commenting on the engineering slash functionality of the creatures, the aesthetic of the creatures, and battle tactics against the creatures, respectively. Structural flaws. Eye stalks. Back. Wait. Ten. Only a very confident designer would wave through issues like bright red warning coloration and a tendency to sleep in broad daylight. There's no way a frontal assault on this thing will work, so we have to get creative. I'm thinking we should hit its back hard while it sleeps, or maybe target those thin-looking eye stalks. The white polka dots on red is quite a look. Something about it is familiar, but where... Ah, right. It reminds me of the captain. Not the polka dots. I mean, the way it snores as it naps in the sun. Yeah. This red bruiser gobbles up Pikmin like candy. The standard approach is to attack from behind while it's still asleep. That may seem callous, but it would do the same to you if it could. Slow those feelings and strike! Bulborbs in Hey Pikmin In Hey Pikmin, the Bulborb fills the role of a boss, as do certain other classic Pikmin enemies. Olimar's log here says the following. The SS Dolphin 2 says it sleeps during the day, but the one I met was awake. I pointed this out and the ship said, I meant during the day on Hokotate. After defeating it, we found an object rich in sparkling. It's possible that the creature considers such objects a delicacy. This is curious. I feel this log is an excuse to explain the creature's awake nature, allowing it to be a boss during the game, as every other red bulborb is seen as a heavy sleeper during the day on PNF 404, the planet of the Pikmin explored in the mainline Pikmin titles. Hey Pikmin's unique planetary setting may have something to do with this. Bulborbs in Pikmin 4 As of 2022 We know very little of the spotty slash red slash basic Bulborbs next appearance, though we do know it will be in Pikmin 4. We've only seen it sleeping and in a single screenshot of it being attacked, but it seems our Bulborbs this time around have a little bit of a simpler, more painterly texture perhaps reminiscent of the figurine and clay-based promotional art for Pikmin 2 and 3. Once that game has released, I plan on posting an updated version of this video with information from that game added here as well. Finally, some trivia. Did you know that Bulborbs were originally envisioned as enemies for a long-abandoned prototype that led to Pikmin called Adam and Eve? During this time, they served as a mammoth-like enemy for early humanity to face off against. They long outlived the rest of the prototype and are now some of Nintendo's most unique basic enemies due to their recognizable design. And that's the Bulborb in a nutshell. They're some of my favorite creatures in video games in general, let alone Pikmin, so I'm happy to have got the chance to talk about them as the kickoff for Pikmin Explained. That being said, I'll stop rambling and end things here, but before I do, I'd like to give a few thank yous. First, I want to give a huge thank you to my partner Spotted Lily Studios, the incredible artist who drew so many of the bulbs for this video, and to Davagato for helping proofread and organize this script. Without the two of them, this video would not have happened. I'd also like to give a thank you to my first Patreon, Mocha Kofa, for supporting me. If you want to support me too, you can subscribe, you can also go to Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can also join our Discord, where we talk Pikmin and are very excited for Pikmin 4. I also wanted to thank you so much for watching. I've been working on this project for months, and I'm so genuinely excited to get to share it with you. That being said, my name is Vantage Emblem. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and want to see more of these, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.